brunch before work and then when I go to work we're having a party where you know they asked everybody to come in and bring like baked goods or sweets or whatever kind of like a potluck but with the desserts for Valentine's Day so I found this recipe last month on Pinterest if you know me you know I love Pinterest and so I found a recipe for these heart-shaped brownies that are dipped in chocolate with Valentine's Day sprinkles on top and at first I'm gonna be honest I thought that I bit off more than I can chew but they actually came out really really good I'm obviously filming the intro after I made them this morning and it's kind of nice that I have a baby cat now because she forces me to get up early so I was able to get up early and bake and get everything done and also shower and get ready so kind of nice having a baby in the house um but anyway so i thought that i would walk you through the process of how i made them obviously i mean you could make them that doesn't need, doesn't need to be valentine's day for you to make them um but maybe this will give you a little bit of inspo or if you're having a belated valentine's day because i know i am i have one this weekend i have one i think the following weekend so if you're having if you're having a belated valentine's day celebration then maybe this will give you some inspo so it looks harder than it is you just have to spend a couple dollars to get the materials that you need but it takes about in total baking time prepping time freezing time cooling time it takes about two hours the recipe said it would take two and a half it took me like two so it's good it's a good one to make like while you're getting ready for the day so while they're in the oven you can shower and then while they're in the freezer you can blow out your hair like that kind of thing so um or really if you just like brownies and if all else fails it'll be a fun ASMR video for you to watch so i hope that you guys enjoy and remember valentine's day is not the only day to show love and it's also not just for romantic relationships so love on the people in your life i love all of you and i wish i could hug all of you and say happy valentine's day so this is my virtual hug to you happy valentine's day and i hope that you enjoy all right guys so let's go through this together as you can see i greased the pan first and then we're lining it with parchment paper i've never done that before but the recipe told me to do that and honestly it just helped everything stick really nicely to the pan so uh, i personally thought that was a really nice touch so we're gonna do that first and then we're gonna start actually making the brownie batter so i used the duncan hines chewy fudge brownie this is the exact same one that the recipe told me to use so i followed the recipe to a t and we're making two boxes and honestly keep in mind you'll see the amount of parts that we get at the end i thought it was going to be more to be honest and that this is using two boxes so um just keep that in mind if you're actually going to use this recipe but everything is doubled because we're making two boxes so i believe that's four eggs everything is multiplied by two this is how i decided to add the water it was just easier i think it was three tablespoons per box so six tablespoons of water just regular plain water and then you're using oil okay it was supposed to be vegetable oil guys i only had olive oil and i know that's bad i really had no choice i was making this before work like i think i mentioned in the intro there was no time to go to the store and i was just praying that it worked and honestly it did i got so many compliments so many compliments about these brownies people thought i bought them um if they thought it was store-bought like they were just so good anyway i am adding in some semi-sweet chocolate chips i think it was like two-thirds a box so double that and you're just gonna fold that in that was a really nice touch even if you ever just make plain regular brownies adding some chocolate chips in there is a really really nice touch so then you're going to just dump that all in onto your pan you can see i'm 
using just like a regular sheet pan. Um, I forget, I think that recipe said to use a jelly pan. I don't know what that is, but it looked just like this. So I just used my regular baking sheet that I use for everything. Um, so you're just going to make that nice and even and spread that out. And you're going to put that in the oven at 350 degrees. I need to clean my oven. Wow. Sorry. Ignore that. Um, you're going to put that in the oven for 30 minutes. And when you check it, you're going to do your knife test. As if, if it comes back clean, the brownies are ready to go. So take those out and you're going to want them to cool completely. The recipe didn't say to do this and I was in a little bit of a rush. So I just put the whole pan in, a, in the fridge for like 20 minutes just to speed up the cooling process. After that, you are going to use a cookie cutter. These are the ones I used. I got them on Amazon. So this is me trying to figure out what like size, if you wanted to make a whole bunch of them. Obviously, you could have used the smaller cookie cutter. I went for this size and I mean, they were pretty big. I, I think I could have gotten away with making the smaller ones, but this one just felt right. Um, and so you'll see that some of them actually come right out and some of them don't. So if I remember correctly, this one is going to come right out. Yeah, this one comes right out and it's so much easier to pull out and they were still a little gooey at this point. But look at that. You can see the chocolate chips in there. Perfect. So, um, I am just chipping away if you alternate the direction of the cookie cutter as you can see there it just you end up being able to fit more as you get closer to the edges on the pan it becomes a lot harder to get them out so just be mindful of that that's why it's really important to not overcook these you want them to be you know well done obviously but you want them to be soft and just be really really gentle when you're taking them out of the cookie cutter um, and then, and don't mind my towel on my head, you're going to freeze those for a half an hour. And now we're going to start melting our chocolate. These are, um, chocolate wafers by Ghirardelli. It, they're made for melting chocolate covered strawberries, pretzels, whatever. Um, I added some coconut oil. The recipe didn't say to do that either, but that's just how I melt chocolate. Um, I put way too much. <laughs> ignore that I ended up dumping some of it out because I put way too much um, but you're gonna just melt that all together and it's actually really cool so because the brownies were in the freezer they weren't like frozen frozen but they were solid and very cold so what happens is as you'll see in a second we're gonna start to dip them into the chocolate I dip the front side of the brownie and it's really cool because they're so cold in like a minute or two the chocolate hardens and it's not as gooey and it just I think that's what made it look really like store bought because the chocolate just gets this like solid glaze look to it um, and it just looks really really good I'll give you a close-up um, at the end. These sprinkles I got on Amazon. Everything was fairly cheap. Um, it's probably even cheaper now that Valentine's Day is over, but the recipe that I used, and I found it just on Pinterest. I'll try to remember to link it down below, and if I don't, you can just remind me. Um, but the recipe that I followed had links to the exact items that the person you know, the chef, the baker, whatever, um, used herself. So the same exact chocolate wafers, the same exact, um, sprinkles, uh, the same exact cookie cutters, all that. Um, so I kind of just followed it like literally to a T. I wanted to do exactly what she did. So uh, we're just going to continue. I don't think they're in frame, but I used some of the leftover brownies with smaller cookie cutters. So there were two really tiny ones in there, but I think they're on the other side, so you can't see them. Um, so I don't know how many I made, but you can see the final products. You see how the chocolate just looks 
solid on top. It just, it, oh, it was just so good. You can see the ones on the bottom are the fresher ones, so the chocolate isn't as solid. Um, but they just came out so, so good. So, there they are back in the fridge, all done. Alrighty, so that was the video. I told you it's really not that hard to do. You just have to take patience, and it takes some patience, and you just have to take it slow and just take it one step at a time. It was actually kind of fun. I've never done like anything like that with like melted chocolate and coconut oil. Um, the recipe actually didn't even say to use coconut oil. I just did that because I thought that it would make it melt better. Anyway, so again, I know this is like a belated thing because this video is going up after Valentine's Day, 